Hello everyone. I am Dr. Pramila. I am a consultant endocrinologist currently working in Haryana. Today we are going to talk about a relatively new molecule, SGLT2 inhibitor, and its various effects. So I'll take up a case, and then we will review. We all are aware that cardiovascular disease is a leading cause of morbidity and mortality in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus. We all are also aware the, of the pluripotent or various extraglycemic effects of SGLT2 inhibitors with regards to cardiovascular protection, renal protection, and protection in other improvement in other metabolic parameters also. So here is a case. It's an hypothetical case. So Mr. A is a 53-year-old corporate executive. He was diagnosed with diabetes mellitus around six months back. When he came for a routine checkup, he complained of uh, generalized weakness. His family, she was positive for diabetes, hypertension, and uh, myocardial infarction. There was a history of myocardial event years back also, and he has been a heavy smoker for about 30 years. He says that he quit five years ago and has been trying to lead a healthier lifestyle. When I examined him, he had a weight of 92 kg. His height was around 5 feet 8, 5 8 around. So his BMI was around 30.7. Blood pressure was 140 by 90 millimeter of mercury. His laboratory parameters, which were advised by somewhere else, and he got it done. It was A1C was 8.4 percent. His LDL cholesterol was 137 milligram per deciliter. His triglyceride levels are 156. HDL cholesterol was 37 milligram per deciliter. His EGFR was 65 and uh, his urinary albumin ketting ratio was on a higher set 50. He was currently on metformin 1 gram twice a day. He was also on antihypertensives like telmisartan 40 mg, etrovastatin 10 mg, amlodipine 5 mg, and ecosperin, esperin, and clopidogrel. So based on this history examination and few laboratory parameters, if we say what should we choose to manage this patient, so we know that we have to keep certain patient-related parameters in mind when we have to choose an agent for diabetes control. So in this particular patient, we have so many, you know, risk, cardiovascular risk factors such as obesity, history of smoking, he is an adult, he has a history of diabetes, hypertension, he also had dyslipidemia. So there are so many cardiovascular-related cardiovascular risk factors. So we have to ensure cardiovascular protection. At the same time, we also have to ensure other microvascular related protection is he is obese so we have to make sure he should reduce some weight and with all this we have to achieve a good glycemic control reduction hba1c to keep it below seven percent and in the door that he should be tolerant with the medication he should be well compliant with the medication so primary consideration in this particular patient is cardio protection and to optimize glycemic control for cardiovascular risk reduction and the therapy, we should also address his uh, weight issues. So we all are aware that SGLT2 inhibitors and DP4 inhibitors both have substantial evidence in support of their cardio-renal protection. So a simple regimen with this combination of SGLT2 inhibitor and one DP4 inhibitor may lead to an early and durable, you know, achievement of HbA1c. If we hear in this particular patient, we need HbA1c reduction of more than a one percent. So combination therapy would uh, certainly benefit this patient and we, with the, this therapy would also be able to achieve a good weight loss and this regimen is relatively safer also as far as uh, the risk of hypoglycemia is considered. We all have evidences for both SGLT2 inhibitor and DP4 inhibitors to be it safe. All hypoglycemia rates or symptomatic, asymptomatic, nocturnal, all hypoglycemias are quite lower if we compare it with the existing sulfonyl and ureas, the rate of hypoglycemia is quite low uh, with this uh, these medications. See, if we review it, uh, then we are, we as we I said earlier, that cardiovascular rate morbidity and mortality is one of the major cause of mortality, morbidity in patients with type 2 diabetes. And it's onset, if we say that, uh, as I said, there is a common risk factors for both cardiovascular disease and diabetes mellitus. So the onset, generally when the patients come to us, all of them are not having, you know, established cardiovascular disease. But majority of them, if we take a proper history and examination and with the help of some laboratory parameters, we'll get to know that they have multiple, you know, risk factors and they are, they also have asymptomatic cardiovascular disease. 
so the onset is you know estimated to occur around 15 years early in patients with diabetes mellitus and this excess risk for established cardiovascular disease in patients with diabetes mellitus has been estimated to be at least twice that of those without having diabetes history there was a framing of skin study also which suggested that two around two third of patients with diabetes mellitus have some sort of subclinical cardiovascular disease and diabetes increases the risk of subclinical cardiovascular disease by around five fold the empa heart study they, which uh, showed the effect of empa glucosin on cardiac structure function and various other biomarkers in patients with diabetes mellitus also showed that empa glucosin resulted in early and significant reduction in left ventricular mass regression which was you know detected by cardiac mri so in 2015 the era of evolving dimension of cardiovascular care in diabetes mellitus management began with the amparic outcome study which revealed that significant benefits of empagliflozin for cardiovascular mortality by even 38% cardiovascular events as well as major adverse cardiovascular events in diabetes mellitus and cardiovascular disease and all type of cardiovascular and all cause mortality were also reduced with empagliflozin that was more prominent and absolute benefits were observed for heart failure hospitalization with heart failure and sudden mortality or death if we talk about post hoc analysis of empiric outcome it also demonstrated that there was a consistent sustained cardiovascular mortality benefit irrespective of the prior cardiovascular event and heart failure burden ckd baseline hb1c levels or presence of multiple cardiovascular risk factors So there have been several mechanisms which have been proposed for cardiovascular effects of SGLT2 inhibitors, including osmotic diuresis, nephrosis, that leads to blood pressure lowering, decrease in arterial stiffness, and vascular resistance. Is also a weight benefit, so that is also contributing to the cardiovascular protection or benefits. There is also a decrease in uric acid levels, and overall oxidative stress is also reduced with the use of such medication. It has also been reported that SGLT2 inhibitors promote reverse cardiac remodeling. It improves car myocardial energetics and filling conditions, reduces left ventricular wall stress and mass, and also reduces blood pressure and arterial stiffness. If we talk about the cardiovascular outcome trial for DQ4 inhibitors, lenalidopine, the Camelina and Carolina trial also demonstrated cardiovascular renal safety. which were the secondary endpoints of lenalidopine versus placebo or any active comparator when added to a standard care in uh, patients with diabetes mellitus who were at higher risk of cardiovascular complications so this particular combination empagliflozin and lenalidopine which is available in the market for quite some time is a first in class treatment in sglt2 inhibitor and dp4 inhibitor combination group of drugs the studies on this combination at week 24 the empagliflozin and lenalidopine combination at a dose of 25 by 5 has shown significant statistically significant hb1c reduction that was more than 1% when it was added on to metformin therapy this hb1c uh, decrement by empaglina has demonstrated around 1.8% as is 1.8% reduction at hb1c baseline when it was more than equal to 8.5% So this combination offers a suitable component in a strategy to achieve a good target HB1C without any, you know, adverse events like hypoglycemia and weight gain in patients with high baseline HB1C level, together with cardio protective benefits in that particular patient. This is a, you know, good combination of both SGLT2 inhibitor and DP4 inhibitors. We have substantial evidences in support of these two agents. all their extra glycemic benefits in uh, as far as cardio protection and renal outcome per protection is concerned so with this i'll uh, conclude here thank you so much for patient listening thank you so much